Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Tuesday, March 12th, and we are here trying to help you make better, different, more considered financial decisions. If you've got a question, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. And while you're there, upper right-hand corner, you'll see there's a contact us button. It's very easy. You click on that button, you complete a form. Now, if you'd like to join us on the air via audio, check that box. If you if you would like to join us via video, check that box. Isn't that easy? It's also the place, that website, jillonmoney.com, where you will see lots of our other content. So what do we have? We've got the wonderful and exciting Jill on Money powered by the compound. That's our YouTube show. You know, it's funny where we've been just having a blast doing it. And it's great because Mark doesn't have to do anything except be the co-host. And he's great at that. You'll also see that we've got Jill on Money live and our next webinar is coming up next week. So for 35 bucks, I'll tell you what, you should pay $35 to see our next guest because it's Cal Newport. And uh, you'll get four webinars, not just Cal, but you'll get four webinars for $35, a lot of cool bonus content. We had video chats with Kathy Jones, the bond expert. We've talked to Scott Rick. He's got a, a book out about tightwads and spendthrifts. Got a lot of stuff. So um, the webinar itself is going to be with Cal, and Cal Newport is a best-selling author. He's a productivity expert, and his new book is great, and I'm really digging into it. So if you'd like to join us, make sure you join Jill on Money Live. Yay! Okay, today, exciting, exciting news, because Mark and I both squealed when we found out where our <laughs> listener Penelope is from. Penelope is on the line from London. Hello, Penelope. I feel like I just want to like break open a scone right now to talk to you. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for asking. Do you love London? I do love London. It's so great. It's right? Almost as good as New York. You think so? I mean, listen, there's a lot of wonderful things about London. I, I have a few like nitpicks. So what is the thing that you miss living in London about the States? I miss um, stores being open 24 hours a day. Oh, right. Isn't that strange? Like you can get anything you want when you live in New York, at least that like you could basically get whatever yeah. you want, whenever you want it. Right. Yes. Um, when I London, no, no. Um, Mark's favorite coffee is from London. And Mark, do you want to put a plug in for your coffee? Monmouth. Monmouth yeah. in, uh, yeah. in Borough Hall. Mark, Borough, Borough Market. Really yeah. Good. yeah, it's good stuff. I, when I was there, Oddly enough, you would think this is crazy, but everyone loves the tube. I think the tube sucks. Because oh, are you crazy? Yeah, the tube sucks. No, you are so wrong about uh -uh. that. Yeah. Compared I mean, to New York City, the tube like oh blows it out of the water. Okay, you're wrong, and I'm gonna and just there are no express trains. There's no such thing as an express train in the London subway system. Number two, there. Uh, yes, I love the Jubilee line. It's brand new. That's great. But those disgusting cloth covered um, cars that are like on the circle line, the district line, that's nasty. That's nasty. I find that like those wildly deep stations where you have to go up four escalators, like you're changing at um, Tower Hill or something, you want to kill yourself. Like it takes forever to just get upstairs. So what about you, Penelope? What do you think about the subway? Jill, when you come again, you yeah. have to take the new Elizabeth line. I know. I like that. It, I, I know. That Jubilee Express. and the Elizabeth. Yes. But that's that it. Express, and, and it is wonderful. It is very, very deep under the ground, but it is an engineering marvel. I prefer the tube in London to the subway <gasps> in New York right. every day of the week. Okay. They tell you when the trains are coming. They come more frequently. There are other issues with the New York City subways, but <laughs> obviously the, the, the tube is 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 a much. Richer, All right. I'm going to let Penelope and Mark win. I'm going to say that Penelope and Mark will win this. I will concede and have my opinions to myself. But I do. I agree that Elizabeth line is gorgeous. And the Jubilee yeah. line is good. But I mean. You get stuck on that district line, you're going to kill yourself. I'm telling you right now. Because I had to commute from Canary Wharf all the way to the CBS Bureau. Where was that bureau, Mark? In Chiswick. 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 Oh, it was like an hour oh and 15 minutes. That's when I started listening to Serial in 20, what year was that? 2014. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's too long. Yeah, but the, the real Londoners would take the overground for that. There's no I way mean, but the DLR own does not. Yeah, but it doesn't take you that direction. That's the problem. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyway, I love city airports. So there's my other thing. Penelope, it's been a delight talking to you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Now, what can we do for you? 
So I was calling because my parents have an annuity. Mm. They're in their 80s and it's a fix. I think, and I might get the nomenclature wrong. I think it's a fixed term annuity. So there's a date on which they can get all their money back plus Mm. the interest. Mm. And I think the person they bought it from probably would want them to roll it into another annuity and then the taxes get deferred. Yeah. I was wondering what other options there might be because. Now, yeah. You're not like, I'm not doing that again is what you're saying. I, I, I think that having the money wrapped up for five years is a really long time. And, you know, they happen to have purchased this annuity when interest rates were low and obviously now interest rates are high. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, you could just, you know, you get stuck in this product for a really long period of time. I don't see the upside. What, tell me about your parents. How are they surviving on terms of income? Do they collect social security or pensions? They have both social security and pensions and um, they don't need this money. Ah, yeah. so that supports them. Okay. How much yeah. money is in the annuity? Uh, they, in, in the one coming due soon, a half a million. Wow. What else do they have in their financial lives besides this half a million that's coming due? Um, they also have a brokerage account. Mm-hmm. They have. How much is in there? I don't know. Maybe 300,000. Look at you, Man, um, 300, very nonchalant of you. Okay. And they probably, they have cash, I'm sure, probably mm-hmm. another 100, 200,000. Mm-hmm. And then they have real estate. Like what? Rental or primary? Yeah, they have rental, they have rental real estate. What do you, th- and, and that's creating income also. So that's creating income. And that's one of the big issues is because if their income goes over 150,000, they can't take the losses on their rental income. Oh. So, so that's one of the reasons they don't like to get more income. I got you. Or realize income. You right. understand. Right. Uh, that's why they, one of the tax deferring aspects of it is very favorable to them because then they can keep their income under 150,000. Okay. All right. That's not the worst thing in the world. Now, let me ask you another question. They're in their eighties. Are they completely self-sufficient living on their own? Do they need help? Like what else is going on? I think that they're going to need help. Um, yeah, they're going to need help. Mm-hmm. But at this point they get by with people in the family helping them. Okay. And you are not, so you're, you're calling on their behalf. You have siblings. I do. And are they in good shape? Like what's the, give me, give me a little bit of like the, the broad brush about them. Oh, the broad brush is, I think everybody's in good shape. My parents would like to perhaps um, give money or buy property for some grandchildren. Oh my. Jeez. Yeah. So the, the, the children, they don't need to worry about. Okay. The grand, the, so, so they're thinking to the grandchildren because it's that generation. I don't know what it is. Generation Z. I yeah. Don't know. That they'll never that, be that, able that to buy a house. On, yeah. That can't buy houses. Mm-hmm. And so I think in their, in their dreams, if they could, you know, give people down payments, buy houses, that's mm. what they would probably want to do with the money. Okay. So they're really not using any of this money because their social security, the pensions and the rental income all float their lifestyle. They might need to dig into some of this money coming in the next group of years, just because they're getting older and might need some help. But other than that, it sounds like they're in very good financial shape, right? Yes. Okay. Definitely. So is there an agent with whom your parents have been dealing on this annuity product? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that I might ask this person is because now you, and you, it's funny, there's like a little wrinkle because of the idea around their taxation. Um, So the, the interesting part of that is that like, if they really do want to continue to defer their income, I would ask the, uh, the agent, well, we think, and I think you have to frame it this way. We think we might need this money because mm-hmm. they're going to, don't tell them about the brokerage account. Hopefully they don't know about that, but, they um, do. oh, all right. Um, but the, you know, we, we're very like, we, we think we're going to need some of this money. We want to give some of this money away. 
we're worried about tying up this money in another product, another fixed term annuity. So there's a couple of choices. One is you could say, hey, what's the shortest term we could do? The mm-hmm. other is, could we annuitize this contract that's coming to, meaning just get a fixed income and then keep getting that fixed amount and keeping, you know, in other words, trying to keep the the annuitization schedule to mm-hmm. a an amount that will keep them under that 150000 I don't know if you're going to be able to because I don't know how much other income they have, but at yeah. least it's worth considering. Mm-hmm. And then I guess the, the last question would be, could your parents swallow having one year where they don't get to d- have a deduction on that rental income? We just don't get it. You pull the money out of this annuity contract. You pay the tax that's due. It's going to hurt. They're going to hate it but you have the access to the money. Do you think you can sell them on that? Because there is a there is an actual estate planning benefit to doing that. Which is? Well, they pay the tax on behalf of the, of the heirs. Because if you guys inherit the annuity, it's going to be taxed at your, whatever your tax bracket is at the right. time. So one way you could just say is like, hey, one easy thing to do would be, mom and dad, is that we think about you guys paying this tax on behalf of the heirs, the kids and the grandkids. And then you also have this money available to you where you can gift. You don't want them to gift out of the brokerage account necessarily because they want they, that would like sop up all their liquidity. But if there right. were 800,000, let's let's pretend it's not 800. If there were 700,000 in that account, because we've taken the annuity out, we've paid the tax that's due, and then we can start with a real um, methodical gifting strategy, that might be something that your parents might sign on to. It's just hard to make that case um, if they're going to be so hyper-focused at that 150000 You have to kind of say, well, okay, you can do that 150000 thing. We're going to tie this money up again, but you don't have the money then to gift to the grandkids. If you want that money, there's two things that can happen. You can pay the tax that's due. They'll be like, yeah, sure. We would like to do that because we're, you know, we want it. We're magnanimous. And you can say, then we have this chunk of money. And now we can really talk about a strategy, not an ad hoc strategy, a real strategy. How many grandchildren are there? Six. Are they all like now grown-ish? Um, half are grown, half are not grown. I mean, are your parents the types who are like, everything's equal? That's the deal. No. Oh, I love I, that. No, no. I don't think it's that. But I will, sorry to just bring up another wrinkle. Do it. What happened before when their income went up is that they had to pay Irma. I know. They're going to cry Irma about made, it. Irma made them crazy. I know. It oh. made them really crazy. So, you know, b- between that and the rental income deduction, yeah. I feel that that's like, you know, it's That's a bridge too far. It's just, it, it's, I mean, I can't, I don't know what the sum is, but it, you know, it ends up being like twenty five, fifty thousand dollars that they're just, they're like, they're all not going to deal with it. The, the you Irma, know, it's too much money. It's just too much to be money. clear, the Irma, the Irma I, I, people, we just interviewed Ed Slot uh, this week. The Irma thing, he even talked about it because people go completely bananas. Irma, yeah. the total part of Irma, by the way, that you would, they would have to pay is an extra $6,000. But right. they doesn't matter. They're, it'll drive them crazy. It'll just it drive them absolutely them nuts. I know. It's bad. Baddie, yeah. baddie, baddie. So let's think about that. So what are our options? I think we have to work with the with the actual agent and, and explain the situation and say, look, we're really worried about this. We might need access to the money. We might need, my parents might need more care. You know, what can we do? Can we have, is there a way to just do an annuity that's one year or two years? Or should we annuitize it? Should we take a little bit of money out? You know, once it comes due, Mm -hmm. if you have that that money just sitting, it'll basically be in a money market account inside of an annuity still. Can you Mm -hmm. just pull money out at, and and make sure that you stay in a tax bracket that's reasonable to them. Um, and so, I mean, what's the social security and pension amount plus the plus the rental income? And then that leaves some little bit of money. And then maybe you take just as much out as you need until 150. And that's it. And that's what you're stuck with. And you keep the money liquid. Or what is the shortest term annuity that we could go into for because it I think it's five years. I don't think that there's a, a, a shorter yeah. term, but maybe there is. 
we need answers from these the folks right. on the ground because it's just giving your parents total freak out about having too much money come out doesn't give us a ton of options. Thank you for being honest with me because I I I I hope that I wasn't reading this the no, wrong way. No. And, and I think that that you you know people who really don't like paying taxes. And I, know. I would put, I would put my parents in that category. They they rather have the money locked up. Okay. And even though they even though they understand and I understood and you know one of my siblings um is definitely you know highest rate taxpayer that mm-hmm. you could be I'm like if she gets the money she's going to be paying so much more tax than anybody that you can imagine you know it makes absolutely no sense for her to get this money eventually but I think that the, it feels that they're already on this train and I feel that they probably may not get off it all right well so be it you know what yeah. Honestly, and that's that is what it is. So the last question I have is: Have they done their estate planning? No. Okay. Now let's talk about what you can actually do and really like hustle with them. You mm-hmm. are going to put in like the fear of God about their estate planning because what you're going to say is you have no idea, mom and dad, how bad this is going to be if you guys don't get some documents in place. Because we don't know where the house is going to go. And if you don't want to treat every single, uh, all of us exactly equally, or you don't want, or you want to make specific gifts to some of the grandkids or bequests, you better put that down on paper. Also, by the way, do you want us to pull the plug or not? Those are the big questions. We got to get them, we got to get them doing their planning. I'm just going to ask one little question because I know Mm. that this is something you talk about all Mm. all the time. I mean, so I'm going to call them superstitious. Like, you know, I I don't want to talk. I I know we have talked about it because we've had other states in the family that have, you know, taken up a lot of time litigation. You know, we're like, you know, the only person who gets rich in this is the lawyer. Yep. Um, And they don't seem to care. Well, I mean, you got to try one, like a little bit, maybe we'll play this back for them. What you have to try to appeal to them in doing, in having the conversation is just to say, don't you want your wishes known? All we want to do is honor your wishes. You have to let us know. I think like, how do they respond to guilt? Not, not very much. Oh God. They're not Jewish parents. They're not Italian (laughs) parents. What happened here? You know, indeed, indeed, what they say is like, well, you know, the state has rules for who gets our money and I'm okay with what the state says. Okay. I mean, what am I going to do about that? Mark, I don't know what to say to that. I think I know why Penelope is living in London. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) There's a lot going on here. We won't dive into that, Penelope. You know what? If you've tried, you've given it your best effort. Um, you know, if they're, if they know how bad it can be. And, and by the way, it's someone's hot mess to clean up Penelope. Do not be the executor. Do not be the executor. I'm telling you right now, it's a pain in the ass. But who you have to, somebody yeah, let somebody in the U S do it. Whoever lives in their state, wherever they live, like their state of residence, they have to do it. You cannot do it from abroad. It's a pain okay. in the ass. Okay. Don't okay. do it. Just like take okay. yourself off, get your rich sister who, who's, you know, in the high tax bracket. Let her do it. She's going to pull her hair out of her head. <laughs> Just telling you that right now. I don't know. Penelope's parents. Come on now. It's very, you know, I have to say, you know, I wrote this in my book, in my first book. I feel like not doing estate planning is kind of selfish. Not that I'm calling your parents selfish. I said they're acting selfishly because it is a pain in the neck to deal with this on the other end. But, you know, they are who they are and uh, they're going to buy that goddamn annuity and they're going to have no estate documents. And so poo to that. By the way, if you can ask them one thing about that brokerage account, just because it could be easier, is Mm -hmm. to see if that brokerage account can be labeled as a transfer on death account. Okay, will do. That's one little extra thing you can do. Give it. Thank you very much. That's a good, that's a good point. All right. One thing they'll do, Mark. Okay, Penelope, go, uh, go get your coffee, have your scone, have your clotted cream, have a nice ride on your, um, on your tube. And thank you so much for getting in touch with us. Hey, are you dealing with um, somewhat stubborn parents? I don't know if we've got Penelope 
any better information except to maybe reinforce that there's not much more she can do. But if you're dealing with an, a, an adult parent who needs a little nudge, bring the parent on the show with us. That would be great. I'd love to have parent, Penelope's parents with us. Go to JillOnMoney.com, click the Contact Us button, let us know if you will join us. Don't forget you can subscribe to this program on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcast. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. And uh, put your hands on someone's back today. It'll be very nice, either physically, metaphorically, however it works for you. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.